applicant can find records that show what was actually built originally. They'd be willing to look at that as an alternative. They're also saying that if they pull out the gravel and it meets standards, they could put the same gravel back. That would be a field yield decision, not something that has to be dealt with by the planning board. But I think that kind of gives you your two options. And the applicant still wants to do the test pit method? Or has there been discussion? Yeah. Further discussion. There, there has been discussion. I, I've talked to Bob Malley about it, and it's just, uh, you know, we disagree, basically. It's just, you know, this, what he is asking for is for us to go in and completely reconstruct the existing um, Golden Ridge Lane portion, uh, which is an extremely costly endeavor. Um, our, approach, as Maureen said, is to go in and dig a series of test pits to demonstrate that we got the proper depth and the proper material. Um, and it seems like, I mean, if, if, if we find that we don't have either one of those, then we'll, we'll do what Bob is asking. But we just think that to go in and just completely box cut the road, remove all the gravel, and then replace it um, without allowing us the opportunity to first go in and check it is uh, a very costly. I think economics should play a role in this, and uh, so we disagree with that. Uh, the other thing I just want to say is that Marine is right that, that there was a condition of the 2003 approval of the subdivision plan um, that the road had to be brought up to town road standards. However, it didn't mention anything about requiring to go in and box cut. So I guess that's, that's where we uh, disagree. Okay. If you were to cut the truck all the way along, instead of past hole, you know, something about 18 inches wide, Long there. Would that not give you all the depths and gravel recordings? It would. Along the whole it would, yeah. And that would be a lot less costly. It would be a lot less costly. Thank you. <coughs> Madam Jim? Yes. What's the time frame it's going to take you to do that? To do your. To reconstruct the roadway? No, to determine you were to do your testing as you wished proposed to do, how long will it take you to determine the results? Oh, it wouldn't take long at all. It would take, you know, it would take a day to go in and dig a series of test pits. And I mean, you know, we're talking about maybe, you know, test pit every, every 50 feet, um, and then send the material to SW Coal, geotechnical engineers, to the lab, have it analyzed, and I don't know, that, I think that takes a couple weeks to get the results back. And also with regard to the applicant's preference, do I understand correctly tonight? Clarify for me if you would please. Uh, are they prepared or is the preference tonight to pay the fee? Is that the preference? To, I'm sorry. To pay the open space fee, is that the preference? No, the pref. I guess, uh, Sheldon's preference is to have this pedestrian trail easement in lieu of the fee. Sort of seems to me like there's some, there's some significant issues on which I'm not comfortable that we have substantial information. If there is a proposal for a pedestrian trail to be accepted in lieu of the fee, I don't feel comfortable deciding that without input from the Conservation Commission. And if we have a technical dis dispute between the town engineer and the applicant on what is an adequate way to determine whether this road is or isn't constructed in accordance with I think standards, I'm, I, I think Henry has a good idea, but I'm not an engineer. And just from the site going out there and looking, it's quite clear that this project was not developed in a conventional way, and so I'm leery that this road is going to meet the standards. So for us to say one kind of pit over another kind of pit is going to get us there, 
Well, I'm not comfortable making that the, call. With regard to the road, that has been resolved. I mean, Bob Malley is not going to change his mind. I tried to change his mind. He's not going to change his mind. So as far as I'm concerned, that's, that's a done deal. In other words, the applicant's willing to go with what he's asking for. Unless the board feels differently. It, but it's not going to be up to Bob Malley. I mean, Bob Malley's not going to change his mind. But the board members may feel differently. Yeah. I, I was ready to put, include in the motion that the road should be done according to the town engineers and Bob Malley's recommendation. <laughs> I feel that comfortable with that. Motion, but I, have, I have concerns about the pedestrian easement and the... The applicant who, at, right, and I, if I were him, I would want to do this as well, go out and actually determine, am I making a good call by doing this? And so he can be on site. Unfortunately, he's not available to do that right, right now. And how do, we, how do we say, yes, we'll take an easement, or yes, we'll take the fee, unless we know he really is 100% behind the easement? Yeah. which he won't know until he does his own site walk. And, and if, the board if the board doesn't want to allow that option, provide that option to the applicant, then I would say Sheldon probably would want the board to vote on this application and he would pay the fee instead of the easement. Okay. Is there a way that we can delegate the issue of the easement to the Conservation Commission and Sheldon? Yeah, it's only Sheldon's option if the Conservation Commission deems it favorable? I don't Is that want too to delegate. Complicated? I don't want to get, delegate my vote on that no. to the Conservation you Commission. Don't. No, okay, not without that. hearing their I don't feel comfortable analysis. It's, it's really their advisory to the Planning Board. Gotcha. Okay. One other question, something that came up on our site walk and I haven't seen here, is there are a lot of downed trees and construction debris left from earlier construction efforts. And if I understood the site layout correctly, some of it is on the applicant's land, some of it is on the neighbor's land. And one of the representations that was made is that at the time that this road is constructed, all of that debris, downed trees and other things, would be removed from the property, and I don't see any of that here. Um, yeah, there, there is no note to that effect. And I think, uh, uh, to me, one of the opportunities presented here is to clean up a development that was left in a very poor condition, and although the current owner wasn't the cause of it, the current owner inherits the land with all of its problems, and this is one of them, as is the road, and, and I would want to see that here, too, because the site was left in a condition that I think needs to be cleaned up. Okay. That can be the condition. And I understood that that had been agreed to, so I would just want to see that. Right. John, I'm confused. Did, I thought I, maybe I misunderstood my question. I, I thought I had asked the question, did I not, what the applicant preferred, and you said the pedestrian easement, and then you just said you preferred the pedestrian Well, if the, board, if the board is going to table this for another month, I'm fairly certain that the applicant would, would just go ahead and pay the fee. Oh, I see. And because he does want to, he does want to move forward with um, the infrastructure, the, the roadway, and, and uh, the sale of lots. And, 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 and Emphatically, there's no reservation about the decision of the Public Works Director regarding to the road that's going to be done to those standards? Unless the board feels differently, right? Yeah. Maureen, I have a couple questions on our proposed motion here and the findings of fact. The findings of fact are modeled. Okay. To start with. So if we're going to do findings of fact, I guess we need a little guidance. Yeah, and I apologize for that. I think there was a little too much cutting and pasting going on. Number four uh, doesn't seem quite current, nor does number five. Yes, those are the ones you want to take out. So those can just be deleted? Just delete them. Okay. And we would want to add some kind of a note on the cleaning up of the trees and the debris. 
So that would just be a number seven, not in the findings, but in the conditions. There'd be a number seven that the applicant would remove down trees and other construction debris. Now, some of that is not on the applicant's property. Do we have, would we need some kind of a agreement? The, probably the easiest way to structure the, um, the condition, which you would want to make number six and make number six, number seven. Um, you want number seven, number six oh, to yeah. be last. Okay, right. Um, probably the easiest way to do that would be to require the applicant to clean up all the debris on his own property and on the neighbor's property if a written consent can be obtained from the neighbor. Okay. My and is there a lot number for the youngs? I don't see it here. There was one time, but probably at this point you may want to say two. Eight Golden Ridge Lane. Lot number two. Lot number two. Lot number two. Eight Golden Ridge Lane. Yes. So condition one is correct because Bob Malley is just agreeing with the town engineer on the proposed road. Well, I believe it's, I think it's paragraph five of the engineer's letter that no, mentions the same issue that the public works director. I, I think it's, par felt, not, I think it's paragraph two. Yeah, he felt, he felt strongly and I encouraged him if you feel strongly, you should let the board know how strongly you feel. So it was a memo written in support of the town engineer's letter. Okay. So, but, but for these purposes, if we just reference the town engineer's letter, we're fine. You are. Anybody else have any questions about a possible motion? Liza? Yeah, I do. I just feel like this is a great opportunity to have, to increase the pedestrian access in town and preserve a, a walkway that's currently used. And I'm just wondering if there's a creative way that we can, um, that we can get this this subdivision amendment going and preserve the option to have that easement. Well, we and could I grant this and the applicant would giving the applicant the option. The applicant if, could apply for an amendment and we could then consider the amendment. In the meantime, the applicant could go ahead with the creating of the lot. And if the applicant wa wants to have the authority necessary to convey lots, if we approve it tonight with the payment, the money payment, the applicant's always free to come in and request an amendment, and at that point, that would be the only issue that would go to the Conservation Commission, and that would give us the time to do that. Right. At what cost to the applicant? I'm just afraid maybe it won't be worth the applicant's time and money to amend the subdivision. I would even be willing to allow the applicant to request a reconsideration of a prior vote, which does not have an application fee. Does that affect the authority to convey this, the new subdivision lot if they're asking for it to be reconsidered? No, because they really cannot convey the lot until the planning board signs the plat and records it. Mm -hmm. And I really doubt that, any of, that all of these conditions will be met and uh, the applicant will be ready to collect signatures prior to 30 days from tonight. So the reconsideration can only happen at the, at the very next meeting. Okay. So that would give the applicant time. So what would we'll the process, process be for letter. Letter. letter? letter. But also a we'll plan be, we'll showing be the back in the country in oh, yeah. a month. Well, yeah. well if, if the board were to uh, require the pedestrian easement tonight, and then the applicant really just wanted to pay the fee, we wouldn't need a revision to the plan. Oh. Uh, so you wouldn't even need a plan. Just hold on to the plans you have tonight. But I guess I'm inclined to go with the money and not to go with the easement. As but a final matter or? It, no, but then it, to it. say that the default is to, for us to accept the money and if the applicant wants to come back with an actual plan for an easement that then goes to the Conservation Commission and the Commission determines that it's more in the town's interest to get this particular path, 
then that could come back to us with the conservation.